It wasn't it wasn't that bad, Rose. Hi, and welcome to the Savage Podcast. I'm Rose, also known as Cheap Lazy Vegan on YouTube. And I'm Daniel, one of your favorite guest stars on Cheap Lazy Vegan's YouTube channel. We're two friends who love to talk about the latest trending topics. So get comfortable and join us while we give our savage take on just about everything. You are currently listening to the previous episode of this podcast, but if you would like to listen to this week's episode and get some exclusive content, go over to patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi there. How's it going? <laughs> How you eat? My bangs be crazy. Yeah. They is. They're mm-hmm. kind of doing a little hoop They're doing to a the little flip. See on the side. Yeah. <laughs> I can't, I can't decide if I want to continue the bang journey or mm. not. Did you dye your hair recently, by the way? Uh, a kind of, a little bit. I don't know. I, I, dye, I don't, When you, you dye know, it? Before my trip, Daniels. You don't notice nothing. It looks darker today for some reason. Daniel, it'd be nice if you noticed things about me. <laughs> okay? I haven't dyed my hair for weeks. Mm-hmm. And I literally saw you like two days ago. That's very true. <laughs> Or was it yesterday? No, no two days two ago. Days, two days ago. Yeah. Anyway, guys, hello, welcome back to the Savage Podcast. Mm-hmm. Woo, woo, woo. Uh, you're right there. Did you want to coaster? No, no. Do you use coasters on I, a regular? I, I do. Yeah. I do not use coasters. I have coasters. Once in a while, if I have guests, I will pull out a coaster. But you're not really a guest. <laughs> I basically live here. <laughs> exactly. Um, no. To be fair, even when I'm at home. On my coffee table, I just have a few like coasters. So whenever right. I have drinks and stuff, I just have them on. Did coasters. you grow up with coaster? Not really. Really interesting. Yeah, I just I don't know. It just like I also hate when they like leave like stains on the sure. tables and stuff. Mm-hmm. Fair. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just wipe it. Yeah. I don't know. I have nice. The thing is, I have nice coasters. I probably should use them. But yeah. just have them out because if you have them out already, yeah, then you like, want, though you use them exactly. Like if if they weren't directly on my coffee table, yeah. I probably would just put mm. stuff on because I'm lazy as hell. There's a laugh list and right there. Exactly. You got to be right there and convenient. Uh, a, a good friend of mine, Rose, once told me, you know, I think it was you. What did I say? You said it's really important to like remove barriers. Yes. So like the less barriers you yes. have to do something, that the more you'll do it. Yes. And oh, God damn, you remembered. I remember some things, you know, <laughs> I don't always block you out. Um, <laughs> I thought you usually do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's like, you know, I remember there was a, a time when I moved to London and uh, my roommates at the time, I'll never forget this. They just moved to London and they're like really excited about joining this gym. So I was like, okay, well, there's oh, yes. there's a fitness first just down the block. It's like, you know, five minute walk from our house. Perfect. You should go there. And they're like, yeah, but there's this other gym that's just like, it's like a little bit of, a little bit further away mm. and it costs like half the price or something. It was like anytime fitness or like a really cheap one. And I was like, yeah, but like, are you guys really going to go? Like it's yeah. an extra, like, I think it was even like five minutes on the bus or something. It would have been like maybe a half hour walk to get to this sure. gym. And sure enough, they joined the gym. Never, uh, never went. To be fair though, it, it would be interesting. Are they the type of people that just join gyms and don't go regardless of the mm. location? They switched to fitness first and they started going. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Because I think, again, it's like you remove yeah. barriers. Like it's like my gym is literally five minutes from my oh, office. Oh, it's true. It yeah. is true. If it was further, yeah. I'm like, even on the weekends, because sometimes I used to go to the one and I've actually uncovered there's one closer to my house. Yeah. Because on the weekends, sometimes I'd get up and I'm like, I don't want to walk down there. Yeah. No, it's seriously a thing. Like for me too, when I mm-hmm. used to live right by my gym, like literally outside the door within 30 seconds, I went a lot more, I think. Yeah. Then like now I have to like, you know. Make the journey over there. Make the journey, either like 30 minute walk or drive over. And it's like, it's going to take, you know, extra effort. So, exactly. Yeah, so so remove barriers, guys. Yes. If you want to use coasters, <laughs> have them ready on the <laughs> me, table. I'm not really like a super. Um, this isn't like a goal for me to no. use coasters, but yes, it, for sure. But it's it's a life lesson. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's a so life lesson. It'd be good. Anyway, so today, guys, uh, it's it's quite well. First of all, thank you, uh, thank you to any new patrons that joined last week. Please join. Okay, patreoncom slash. <laughs> please join. Please join us. patreoncom slash the Savage Podcast, where we do. Um, Bonus episodes every single month, yep. only for patrons, ad free content, and every episode a week earlier than everybody else. Mm-hmm. And you get a shout out on the show. Okay. This yep. week we don't got no new ones. So we'd be a bit sad. We'd be sad. We'd be crying. So <laughs> we'd be crying on the sad. So yeah, join us on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash the savage podcast. Beautiful. Thank you, Rose. So today, what's, it's, a little, it's a little dry on the stories. Oh, yeah. That's drier than my. Uh, no. <laughs> The my skin, I need to moisturize a little bit, uh, you know? Uh-huh, mm-hmm. that's what we, do, we be talking about. Yeah. Uh, so, we do have one story that I do want to talk about with you mm-hmm. because I think it's quite funny. Okay. So, 
have you heard of crumble cookies? I have not. So this is like one of those things that go viral. Mm. Kind of reminds me of... Like the Stanley Cup? Yes. I was going to yeah. literally just say, like, just something stupid. <laughs> like, no offense. I'm sure maybe it's delicious. I don't mm. know. I'm pretty sure they're not vegan at all. But yeah. um, it's this, like, cookie uh, company that sells cookies. Okay? Like, great. Freshly baked cookies. They sell them. I think they come from some, probably LA or something. Yeah. Now they're, like, I think there's one in Toronto. Okay. And I think they're, like, probably, you know, in a few different locations. And they sell these like really big fat, like um, kind of soft cookies. Mm. And like every week they have different flavors. So it's kind of started this trend online. So this is why it reminds me of Stanley Cup because mm. I feel like it's very like an online sort of thing. Yeah. Like people spend a lot of time online and they would know what crumble cookies are. And it's quite, it's already kind of controversial because it's like some people say it's like really good. Yeah. And some people say it's like tastes like shit. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, everyone has different taste buds, whatever. But basically every week they'll come up with like new flavors mm. and then people will do like taste tests, mukbangs, right? So they'll be like, oh, this week's crumble cookies. And then it'll be like, here's my carrot cake crumble cookie. Mm, I give it a seven out of 10, you know, that, mm, that kind okay. of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But people are saying that it generates kind of overconsumption um, like it's, it adds to overconsumption yeah. of not only calories, but just in general, like just yeah, yeah, yeah. buying cookies for the sake of, you know, trying a trend or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah. And, and like there's, these cookies are supposed to be like extremely not good for you, like yeah. really high in calories. Well, especially this is the thing mm -hmm. as someone that used to be an avid cookie connoisseur. <laughs> oh, really? No, Wait, no. <laughs> you've never been that much of a cookie connoisseur. I used to love my cookies. Oh yeah. I still sometimes do, but in order to make them soft and yeah. like really like chewy and stuff, you have, you to, have, have to put lots of butter. So much. So much butter. Because I remember when I was younger and this was like pre-vegan days, I was like trying to make the perfect chocolate chip cookie. Ooh, mm -hmm. And I was like working with my mom and we we're like trying to like, we try different recipes and stuff. Yeah, so I really, yeah. I, oh, wanted, that's cute. I wanted to make the, there's another place called George's Cookies that used to right. do like soft. I wonder if they're still around, but they did like soft and chewy like chocolate oh, those chip. Those are my favorite type yeah. of cookies. So I was like, hey, we got to, we got to learn, how, we got to do this, right? And the only way we could get remotely close is putting like the most ridiculous ridiculous amount <laughs> yeah. of like butter in there and i was like this is not good and that's why like when you look at like cookies like that you just buy like one cookie is like i don't know 600 calories or something crazy it's crazy yeah it's like actually insane it's like pure fat basically mm, mm -hmm. um and it's like there's so many places i, I just don't <sighs> with with something like a trend like this like the like what is it called crumble, crumble co cookies crumble cookies like i'm like okay really I, I feel like, I mean, obviously there's a market for it, but at the same time, I'm like, look, look how many places you could walk down mm. this street and how many places Buy sell cookie. cookies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you, we do, we need a, a store dedicated to fucking oh, apparently cookies. Apparently we do. So it gets worse, Daniel. Okay. You're going to die. Okay. So that's the kind of background of the crumble cookie. As far as I know, I never tried a crumble cookie. I don't think they're vegan. I don't, it doesn't really look that appetizing to me. Some people are saying it's too soft. Yeah. That it's almost like raw and people are having, I don't know, very, it's a very controversial cookie. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the new controversy mm. is basically um, Australia, in Australia, in Sydney, Australia, uh, there was this big campaign and it was like crumble cookies coming to Australia. And it was like a huge deal, right? Yeah. So it was like a pop-up crumble cookie event. So come to wherever, Bondi fucking street. That's all I know about Sydney. <laughs> Bondi street <laughs> in Sydney and pick up a crumble cookie. Have you not been to Sydney? I've never been to Australia, Daniel. Right. We need, we need to go. Oh, God damn. It'd be a, it'd be a journey and a half over there. It's, like the same as going to, it's the same as going to Bali, basically. It's further than Bali and you know it. Let's see. How, how long is your flight to Bali? So it was... Well, how long was our flight? We flew from Van uh, Calgary to Vancouver. And then Vancouver. It was to like, like Tokyo or something? Or was it Tokyo? Or was it Taiwan? Or Oh, no. We went to Bangkok first. Oh, remember, yeah, yeah. So that's different. It's far, Daniel. Well, because like, for example, I, w I went recently. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize let me, there, was, let me look. there was a direct flight. Well, it's semi-direct. Obviously, we have to go through Vancouver because apparently we always have to go through yeah, Vancouver now. It's really annoying. I, I don't know what happened to all the direct flights. Like it, it Because um the... Oh, God, there was some reasoning behind this. Mm. Oh, this is why. Okay. Canadian. Again, guys, we're going to complain about Canadian flight systems. Yeah. Because it's fucked up and it's stupid. Yeah. And it's been like an oligopoly for years. Okay. It's been WestJet and Air Canada. Yeah. And basically, it's now kind of almost a monopoly yeah. because what's happening is, and I know this because I have some insider information oh, God, from Air Canada because my friend works in Air Canada. God, damn. Basically, 
like I guess what they did, I don't even know if this is like insider information, yeah. but essentially what they're doing is with WestJet, WestJet comes from like, I think it's from Calgary. Yeah, it's a Western. Yeah. So it's a Western uh, Canadian company. Yeah. Uh, and then Air Canada is like more Eastern. So they've decided now they're going to split the kind of country a little bit where so air canada focuses more on like eastern canada yeah and westjet focuses more on western canada now the prob- problem is um westjet doesn't have as many international flights as far right. as i know okay air canada has a lot more international flights yeah so oftentimes air canada still does run in like western canada obviously yeah but it runs more so from vancouver because they uh, want to focus on like kind of the big air like big uh like cities or whatever exactly so they don't want to do like oh calgary to like london they're they're leaving they're leaving whatever calgary airport to like WestJet kind of yeah and then they only focus on like vancouver just because vancouver is such a big airport they can't really like let let go of vancouver yeah so that's why now there's less direct flights from calgary Oh, uh, okay. That makes sense. And We're it makes just sense. Because I've noticed now, anytime we fly international, yes. we always have to stop anytime. through Toronto or Vancouver now. It's so annoying. It's like there's so so many less direct mm-hmm. flights. So now we're really dealing with uh, really like kind of lack of choices when it yeah. comes to these. Well, and so what I was going to say though okay. is so my semi-direct flight, I mean, it went through Vancouver. Okay. So obviously we have the hour gonna, to Vancouver. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Vancouver direct to Sydney is 15 hours. <laughs> It wasn't, that, it wasn't it wasn't that bad rose 15 i've never been what what was the longest remember when we when we went on that flight and we took an edible and we passed out yeah which flight was that one that was the one to bangkok how long was that flight i think it was like tw- 12 hours ish, right yeah that's i think that was the longest flight i've ever been on really yes but then the thing is though also some flights depending on the route it's not necessarily that the country is further mm. but i feel like the route they like i don't know what they do with the route but like <laughs> what they do with the route <laughs> um, because I remember seeing another flight, which I, cause I'm going to Bali next week. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm not owing the <laughs> Bali trip. I'm owing the long flight. Okay. Cause I'm not looking forward to the long flight. I'm looking forward to Bali. Yeah. Anyways, the, the problem is though, I was looking at flights and it was like Calgary to Vancouver and then Vancouver to Singapore, I think. Yeah. I think. And that flight was like 16 hours. And I do not remember Singapore flight being that long. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and it's also not as far as far from what I know as Bali. So it doesn't make any sense. Mm. So I feel like they're like doing some, uh, I don't know, shimmying with the route. I feel like they're, they're changing the routes. I think you're right. I think a lot of places now it's getting harder to get direct. So they're like, there's good, there's like Mm. hubs. Yeah. I don't know. So maybe Singapore is like a hub, just Uh. like Vancouver is a hub. So yeah. it's like you got to stop in the hubs yeah. and then go somewhere. Oh, and it's like okay, let me talk about Sydney. Let's see how long it takes. Yeah, well, Calgary took- to Sydney. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, si- oh, yeah, sixteen hour flight basically, fifteen and forty minutes. Yeah. <gasps> God, that's like, that's too long, Daniel. I didn't find it that bad. Really? Did yeah. you? Was it like an overnight flight? Uh, I think it was, and I seem to remember oh. I also took an edible <laughs> before. Oh, that's why, Daniel. And then, but even coming back, I didn't find it that bad. And I was just, really? I was, I was more, I was happy that I only had the one layover in Vancouver and then it was just direct to Sydney. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's like no more layovers, no more stopovers. Oh God. Sometimes I like, sometimes I think I almost prefer a layover than like a 16 hour flight. Yeah. To me, it's like almost sounds cause like that was, I think that was cause I did consider taking whatever flight and I was like, Oh God, it'd be less layover, mm. but I just don't know if I can do a 16 hour flight. 16. So you're not going to come with me to Australia? I mean, I'm mad. It'd be fun well, as hell. Let me see about Bali here. Because I want to compare. I, I, no, let me just look at a map. <laughs> oh, God Map damn. of the world. We've completely derailed. I have to well, go back to that story. I, the cookie crumble story. Yeah. That's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> oh, my God. Daniel, have I ever told you that you really should? See, look, it's a bit, for a, it's a bit further. Let's, I mean, where's it's Sydney? Such a great descript- there's such a great image there, Rose, that I was seeing. <laughs> I'm trying to pull up an image. Do you not have Google Maps? Yeah, but that's like... Okay, I'll go on Google Maps. <laughs> oh, okay, God Sydney. Australia. Sydney, Australia. Oh, so it's on the east side. Okay, and then Indonesia's here. So it's a bit further, Daniel. Yeah, so you see Bali. Look at if you go from... Look, look, look. Yeah, but are you going... Oh, yeah, I guess you would be going this way. Yeah, you'd be going down. And That's over. true. That's true. So, anyway... Anyway, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Because so, <laughs> if you think about it, it's they're only... They're both very far. Yeah, they're, it's far. For us to get to Asia, and Aust- Australia's just like far from everything. And th- here's my thing with Australia, and Australians do not hate me. Mm. I've never been that fussed 
about going to Australia. And here's why. Um, I'm like, I like nature and like, I do like traveling for nature. Yeah. But I think like at least up until now, I loved, I, I'm more about traveling for like culture yeah, and like seeing cultures and seeing different, you know, buildings and different whatever. And I just feel like Australia, I don't just feel, I know that Australia and Canada has quite similar cultures. Mm. They're quite similar countries. Again, very different, but at the same time, more similar than others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're newer countries. They're both British colonies. We all speak English, although very different accents. And really? everyone's kind of nice. The accent's different. Yeah, I do like the accent, though. <laughs> I might want to go just for the accent. I think you want to. Guys. I do. Just to hear but then I'm gonna, talking like but this. I'm, <laughs> but I'm going to be there and try to talk <laughs> like this and people are going to hate me. <laughs> oh, my God. Honestly, my friend's, uh, my friend's husband, Yeah. he will die if, if we went oh, there. Oh, yeah. And then we're like, hello. Yeah, because I was, <laughs> I was doing that to them the whole time. Like, I, this was like right we leading up to the wedding. And I was like. The I was audacity, like, Daniel. I was like. And it was, uh, keep in mind, I was like. You were every, in Australia. I was in Australia. There's like a bunch of Australians. I was like, hello. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, fuck off, Daniel!" <laughs> and then one, what the uh, my friend's husband, my friend's husband was like, "Who invited the American?" Oh, <laughs> I was shit. like, "Oh, shots fired! Uh, shots fired for sure!" Yeah, uh, yeah. So that might be one reason I would want to go. Well, you want to go, and also, I want to go, Rose. <laughs> yeah. The coffee scene in Australia. Oh. they have really good coffee. You know, as much as I love coffee. Uh, a 16 hour <laughs> flight for some nice coffee seems like a lot, but no, True. I, I'm sure once I get there and I, once I go there, it'll like, I'm sure like I'll probably change my mind. It'll be yeah, great yeah. and amazing and beautiful. And I do want to, I do want to see like all the nature and yeah. all like the, you know, the stuff. Cause it is like a fascinating and big country and it's beautiful. And like, I'm sure it's gorgeous. The thing is too, their main cities as well are just like Sydney is so special. Like, God damn, you love, it. I really, you'd be in love it's with funny Sydney. The first did you fall in love in Sydney? I did. Mm-hmm. I didn't fall in love with nobody. I fell in love with the city oh, God damn. so much so that maybe I moved there. Oh, God Sam Daniels, you wasn't moving there. It's too far. It is too far. This is the thing. I was like, if it was like a little bit closer mm-hmm. and it wasn't such like a fucking oh, disaster so to get far. there. I was like, th- th- that's the main thing. It's like, it's just, it's just a bit too far. But when you get there, Sydney is such an incredible city. Right. So much, so much to do. Even just like walking around Sydney. Yeah. It's such a beautiful city. Right. Like it, it has like everywhere you turn, there's like new cool things. Sure. They have a huge vegan scene there. Right. And like a lot of people are like into fitness and all that kind of stuff. And then like, I don't know, it just, it was a really cool space. And then Melbourne on the other side. Sure. Or like kind of further over is also, it's like very different feel than Sydney. I heard Melbourne's like cool and Sydney's pretty. Yes. That's what I heard. I, I feel like Sydney, yeah, Sydney is like, um, it's like very... LA almost like yeah it's like, I think I would like Melbourne yeah you would <laughs> it, but Sydney's like it's very pretty it's like very picturesque right it's like, it's like on the coast you have lots of like beach walks sure. and like it, the beaches are like in the city basically it's gorgeous yeah. yeah um but then when you go over to Melbourne it's like yeah it's like more trendy it's got yeah. more like grit and culture sure. I feel like yeah I would yeah. like I think I would like Melbourne anyway yeah. I do want to go there one day but I just think it's like to go that far you yeah. know what I'm saying it's like if it was a bit closer I'm sure I would have I gone already yeah but it's like to go that far I would a if I wanted to go I would probably want to see all the nature and stuff and be like I would want to spend more time there yeah, yeah like I wouldn't just want to be there fly all the way there fucking 16 hour flight and then stay there for like a week and come back. Like I did? Yeah, like you did. <laughs> well, that was for a wedding. So it was, was for a wedding. Make... That was a bit different. Yeah, but I have been... Last time I went there, the first time I went there, uh, I did like a... I think I did like six weeks. It feels like a month, no? Yeah. yeah. Oh, longer than a month. Okay. It was about... Maybe it was a month. Maybe it was like six... I think it was six weeks. Right. And we went all over. And that right. was amazing. I would do that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So... So back whew. to the... Back to how so, the cookie crumbles. So <laughs> how the cookie crumbles. <laughs> and it crumbled, all right? So Uh-oh. essentially... So this whole thing, they were uh, announcing this big crumble cookie pop up in Sydney, Australia. It was only available for like a day or two. Yeah. So people lined up for like, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour to get a fucking cookie. Okay. (laughs) And they paid. This will kill you, Daniel. I don't know. I don't know if I want to know. How much do you think they charge per cookie? Australian dollars. (sighs) So normally crumble cookies already. Hold on. Let me see how much crumble cookies cost. Like I'm guessing they're like $6 for a cookie or something ridiculous. Like, Like you mean for the regular cookie? Yeah. So how much, wait, let me get it. Crumble cookie. How much are crumble cookies? Um, LA. So that's in USD. So a single one is five US dollars or oh. 450. Yeah. Okay. 450. Okay. So I'm guessing in Australia, then it's going to be like eight Australian dollars for one cookie. <laughs> you just wait. You're not even close. Like as in it's more. What do you think, Daniel? Yes. It's more. $10. Just wait, Daniel. $15? 
Just wait, Daniel. Twenty dollars. Seventeen dollars. Oh, for per a- cookie. No. Now. <laughs> no, Rose. Mm-hmm. I'm not kidding. Seventeen dollars. Now it gets worse, Daniel. It gets worse. The story, the plot thickens. What's worse than a seventeen dollar motherfucking cookie? <laughs> God damn. So seventeen dollars per cookie. Yeah. And, uh, not only that. So people. So after they line up for a fucking I don't know thirty minutes an hour. Yeah. They got they spend seventeen dollars for a cookie. This is how insane internet trends are. This is fucking crazy. And then people tried it, and a lot of people were disappointed. It was a bit stale. It mm-hmm. didn't taste as good. It was, you know, it was just not giving. It was not giving seventeen dollar cookie vibes. Mm. Turns out, it wasn't actually crumble cookie that was holding this pop up. It was just some random people that flew to America, bought like I don't know six hundred, seven hundred cookies, brought them over no. to Australia, set up a pop up. Use the crumble cookie image and the name and everything. Sold these cookies for seventeen dollars, and that's why they were stale and disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Did people get their money back? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know what's happening, but they're probably gonna get sued or yeah, something. Yeah, there's gonna be gonna a, there's gonna be a lawsuit Cause because like, like everything they did is probably illegal. hundred percent. Well, first of all, crumble cookie will probably sue them. Also, I, I what I don't understand is like, don't you need some kind of business license as well to like do this kind of thing? You would think. <laughs> I mean, really, if I wanted to, Rose, I could do a pop up right outside my house, mm-hmm. and like I could, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so they probably didn't get a bu- business license because in order to get that, they'd probably have to prove that they are Crumble Cookie or something. Well, they would, yeah. Yeah. And so I think that they probably did it. So like the mm-hmm. thing is, you know what? I could start a little cookie thing right now, right this second, sell as right. many as I can, close up shop, and then go hide. Yeah. Because I didn't get my proper licenses. Yes, exactly. You know, so that's probably kind of like what that's they're probably doing. why it was like a pop up. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, people are now, and then now after the fact, I think they either. I think initially they like changed their account to like they put like oh we are not actually affiliated with crumble cookie we're just fans of crumble cookie and people are like you know what you did is very illegal like yeah. and also like you kind of probably need to have some kind of food uh distribution license because you can't just like like technically people could have gotten sick like who yeah. the fuck knows right because it's like how long have you when did you buy these cookies yeah exactly well you bought them uh, you know and, and then eat. we've we've acknowledged that it's a long ass flight so from LA probably 16 hour flight probably yeah so we're talking <laughs> in car in fucking cargo or whatever. Yeah. How did you even smuggle so many cookies back to the state? I have no idea. There's so many questions. <laughs> so many questions. Also, so, yeah. I'm sorry, but like this is a you know obviously they shouldn't have done that. But then also similar to like fire festival and some of these oh, other, you're other things. The, you're blaming the victims. Daniel? I'm like I'm gonna victim blame a little bit here, guys. <laughs> Don't hate me. But it's like uh-huh. what what are you doing spending seventeen dollars on a cookie, I guys? Know, like I know that is out outrageous it's it's kind of funny though isn't it yeah it's kind of giving fire fest vibes it, it like, is it's like okay like, you know i don't feel that bad for you it yeah. just seems a little stupid like it sucks that you paid 17 dollars for a cookie but also why the fuck would you ever pay 17 dollars for a cookie mm-hmm. like i'm sorry there's no uh, even if, if the cookie is like fucking baked by the fucking <laughs> king of england or something i'm still not paying 17 I think the only for way cookie. i would if it was guaranteed that it was like the best cookie in the world then I might pay seventeen dollars for a cookie. Yeah, or if it was like for a fundraiser and they were like, sure, you know, part of the sure. proceeds were going to charity and blah blah blah. Yeah. So there you go. Um, uh, yeah, it was. It was. It was in Bondi. I was right. North Bondi. North Bondi. That's where I. That's where I stayed. Did you ever stay in at, North Bondi? It wasn't North. I think I just stayed Bondi. Bondi. Anyway, so there it uh, there it is. Seventeen dollars for stale, disgusting cookie. <laughs> God damn! I'd be so mad. Oh, you would be so mad. Furious. You would sue. Indeed. You would sue before crumble. I would. <laughs> I'd be like, give me my... I would like eat the cookie. I'd be like, this is disgusting. I want my money back. <laughs> like, fuck Well, this. I think people, the problem is they would buy it and they don't usually eat it right away, right? right? You take it. And a lot of them, again, because this is an internet phenomenon, yeah. a lot of them would film themselves like right. trying. So they probably it. maybe waited even another hour before they got home sure. to fucking eat it. And at exactly. this point, the, the cookie's been... The cookie's crumbled. <laughs> it literally has crumbled. <laughs> it and it's literally been... crumbled. Not in a good way. No. And it's been stale for uh, probably 24 hours at this point. Yeah. It's and not, in the Australian fresh. heat. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. This All right, crazy. guys. So that's the one story we wanted to talk about. We couldn't yeah. come up with any other story. So we thought we'd continue with Am I the Asshole? Oh, God damn. Yeah. What do you think, Daniels? I think that's a good idea. I yeah. think it's a good idea. I mean, we already killed like 25 minutes talking about fucking cookies in Australia. Oh, God. God. This is how we have a podcast. But I do, I do, anything. I do honestly like, oh, uh, there's something about Sydney. 
you really love it. But it's funny because like you've been there before, right? Yeah. But I feel like the first time you went, you weren't that amazed. This time you like loved it though. So yeah. what changed? I don't know. I think the first money? time you got more money. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably part of it. Yeah. Cause you stayed in Bondi and I assume the first time you probably stayed in some shithole. I didn't actually stay. I think me and my friends were just in Sydney for the day. Right. So you didn't even have that much time. Yeah. So I think, I think that's probably part of it. Cause we kind of like, we did, we walked around and it was like, whatever. But then when we were in Melbourne, we were there for like four days, I think. And we right. were like, went and explored the city and like, you know. And you liked Melbourne. Yeah. Okay. And this time I didn't go to Melbourne. So it'd be interesting to go back there as well mm. to see. Cause I did, I actually really love that city mm. as well. They have the really cool, like. Um, there's this, like this district where it's like, um, a, like kind of like an alley, but it's downtown. Yeah. And it's like a, it's world famous where they have like different graffiti artists mm. where they like take turns doing these like beautiful murals and okay. stuff. Okay. And people like pay them and like it's it's crazy. It's oh. so cool. There's like little things like that. You so know. So I guess I need to go to Australia. Let me know, Rose. We can go to Gia. Oh God damn, go to Sydney and stay in Bondi. I'll go again. Bondi. <laughs> God damn, Rose. It'd be crazy as hell. <sighs> All right, guys. Let's uh. Let's roll with the M-I-Z asshole. So for those of you new to the podcast, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. just a little bit of PC. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. Which what is Daniel. Well, it's not that exciting, actually. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I got so excited about it. But guys, still early days, but I want to wanted to say this on the podcast because it is tradition. Okay. Oh, Love is Blind. Love is Blind. <laughs> season seven, guys. We've God, been doing this. Crazy. For, this will be our seventh season. That we're going to react to. Seventh season of US, and we've done one UK season. That's true. So really, this is the ninth. No, because this is going to be the seventh. Oh one. right, right. Eighth. So we've done seven. Yeah. This would be our eighth reaction. Yes. So guys, buckle up your seats. Ah! Um, you know, over the next couple of hold weeks, hold your breath. Hold your breath. Over the next couple of weeks, get caught up on Love Is Blind. When Rose gets back from Bali, yes, we're gonna do a wine and Love Is Blind season seven. Have you started? I haven't started yet. No. And how many? I'm gonna. We're, we might be a little behind at that point, because when do they release like all? The well, episodes? no, because because typically they like, release a little bit at a time. They right? do a little bit at a time. So right now, I think it's like the pods, and then they'll like release the like right. Okay. The next. So piece. we might be just in time. Yeah. So I think maybe even like after the reunion, we'll see. Oh yeah, yeah, true. So and then the reunion usually comes a little bit later. So like I think by the end of October. Right. Pretty much That'd when be you're perfect. back. Yeah. Perfect. So, so I I plan on watching it on the plane which I think is a great waste of my time. Perfect. Because like, you know, plane time is like, you know, it's like dead time, right? It's like, you know, it's a waste of time in general. Exactly. So I might as well waste my time while wasting my time. Exactly. And therefore, it kind of cancels out the wasting time. So make sure, Rose, add it to your list of to-dos. You having to download all of them. Add it to your list of to-dos. <laughs> exactly. Because I know, how ready are you for this trip, Rose? Uh, not ready at all. <laughs> exactly. As usual. <laughs> There you go. Oh, and another announcement, guys. Uh, if you didn't listen to our couple of previous episodes, uh, Daniel and I are hosting a vegan hiking and camping trip in the Canadian Rockies, okay? Which is about an hour away from where we live, actually. Yeah. So if you guys want to come along, make sure you check out the link in the show notes and in the description uh, to check out the dates, the prices, the itinerary, and the details, okay? Mm-hmm. It's a hiking and camping trip. It's going to be awesome. We're going to such amazing, beautiful places. Some of the most beautiful places in the world. That's right. Okay? And um, if you love out- the outdoors, you will love this, okay? Yes. So check it out, you guys. It's happening in August 2025. Yep. All right, Daniel, you want to pick yeah. the uh, first M-I-Z asshole? I'll pick it. For, I'll pick it. I'll pick it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, God damn. Am I the asshole for telling my wife, it isn't hard, you can do it by yourself, referring to Ikea furniture? Ooh! Ooh. <laughs> the Ikea dilemma. This is a, Ikea furniture is a great way to test your relationship. Yeah. Continue. Uh, it, it actually is. So my wife recently bought bought some new furniture from Ikea. <laughs> also, from Ikea. another note on Ikea. Yes. Like the Ikea had this brand of like, and I, this kind of came out. I think we might've talked about this in another episode, but you know, they had this like brand of having like relatively like affordable furniture because you have to build it yourself. It's, it's super like, affordable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then there was like a controversy that came out where they were like comparing some of the new Ikea furniture to like, first of all, the old Ikea prices, mm. but then also showing like where you could buy these things already made that's similar mm. that were cheaper. And one oh, of them that's was, interesting. Yeah. One of them was like the couches because the couches have gone up a lot in price in Ikea. Oh. And they were like comparing an Ikea couch, which was like, I don't know, a basic one was like, I don't know, like 12, 1300 bucks now. Sure. Which is still pretty cheap. But like... They were comparing it to where you can get couches for similar price that are already made. All oh, this stuff. interesting. And they were like, it's not 
you know, so you do have to do your shopping more now. I do think that with Ikea, it's a hit or miss. Yeah. And it depends. Some things, yeah, like couches, I probably wouldn't buy from Ikea. Yeah. Because I think, I don't think you get as much value. Mm. I mean, not that I, Ikea is like throwaway furniture, right? Because that yeah. shit is not going to last. Yeah. So if you want to get something for quick, for cheap. Some of the stuff is nice though. Like I bought like a, I bought. Some of it. Yeah. I bought a, a shoe thing for my front entrance. Oh, the, the the white one that like comes out. Well, it's actually dark wood, but like oh, it, interesting. Yeah, but it pulls like it has like little slots for your shoes right. and stuff. It's so handy. Oh yeah, okay, okay. And it's lasted so far two years. Oh, goddamn, two years. Mm-hmm. Make me holla. Make you. Holla. How much did it cost? Do you remember? Like a hundred, hundred twenty bucks. Okay. So it wasn't bad. Okay, so my wife recently bought some new furniture from IKEA. She has been remodeling the house, and almost every week she's buying something new. I do not like assembling furniture. Every, <laughs> every single time she has bought something, I am the one who's assembling it. I don't oh. I don't think it's that difficult. Oh, <laughs> shit. Really, it is more time consuming than anything. I got home and she bought a new desk and asked me to put it together. I told her, no, it isn't that hard and you can do it yourself. <laughs> she wasn't happy about any about any, and did go do it. She, uh, she wasn't happy about it, basically, yeah. and she did do it. Yeah, she went and did it. It wasn't long until she made a loud yell. <gasps> she dropped a piece of wood on her foot. <gasps> this caused a big argument about me not helping her. And I pointed out <laughs> that she doesn't want help. She wants me to do it all. She called me a jerk and the desk is just lying, laying on the floor, not assembled. Oh my God. I am refusing to assemble it. Oh my God. Edit. This is her hobby. Basically every year she finds a room or multiple things and redecorates them. Even when it isn't needed. She just wants to change stuff up. I love, I love the on- ominous that the desk is still just lying there <laughs> unassembled. Because you know that, that uh-huh. she walks past that room every day and it's uh-huh. like, it's not fucking assembled yet, is oh it? Oh my, okay, I need more information. Mm. So I'm like, I hate, I, God, I'm, I'm so biased. I'm like, I'm like, what did he do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what, like, what, there, there's more to this. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, because obviously, again, he's writing it. So he's saying, you know, like, he's always the one putting it together. She's always asking him to do it. Okay, great. But is it because you're not doing anything else in the house? Yeah, like, like, this is what I mean. Is it it because there's not proper furniture in the house? Or is it just for for fun? I guess he's saying it is for fun. Yeah. So at face value, I guess we have to take it at face value. Yeah. What do we think? I think... (sighs) Everyone sucks. I also think that. I think he sucks yes. for not even just like, just helping your wife with this furniture. Like, who cares? Just fucking help. Yes. You know, maybe do it together. Make it a fun thing. Or maybe like both of you need to have a conversation. Exactly. <laughs> and be like, hey, I actually hate assembling furniture. Mm-hmm. Um, do you mind not having this hobby? Or if you want to have this hobby, either we can do it together as Or you a team, figure it out yourself. Or you could do it yourself. Yeah. Um, just don't keep asking me to build the furniture because this isn't really my hobby. Exactly. Versus just like not saying anything it sounds like he didn't really like express that he really hates it yeah um and then all of a sudden randomly being like no i'm not gonna do it you just do it after he's been doing it this whole time yeah yeah i think people yeah people agree everyone sucks here (laughs) there seems to be a massive disparity here your wife is bringing home flat pack furniture every single week and you are expected to assemble it question mark weird why is she the only one making the decisions on what furniture you have (laughs) in your home shouldn't these be, be decisions you're making together you should at least be assembling the furniture together. Yes. Maybe this needs more info really to judge. I can understand your point of view. You're a bit sick of assembling furniture every week without a heads up, but it seems like you've left her to make all the decorating decisions. There you go. And I guess to her, assembling that is your part of the contribution to the whole project. You two need to communicate better. Yes. Completely agree. Is this your comment, Rose? <laughs> Literally. Well, that's how, like, that's what it sounds like. It's like, number one... Th- they're not communicating at all because it doesn't mm. make any sense. Like imagine, like I'm just trying to imagine, like I'm trying to imagine, like imagine you were living with a man and yeah. you bought, you just like, or he just randomly bought a bunch of new furniture and was like, oh yeah. So can you assemble, can you assemble it? But it's like, okay, where, where's the context? Did you need new furniture? Yeah. Like, is he doing nothing in the house where you feel like you have to go out of your way to buy the furniture because he's not buying the furniture? Yeah. Like, what are you and then he's saying it's it's just a hobby i don't know like it's weird it is weird <laughs> it's weird it's i don't know yeah, some people are saying not the asshole not the asshole she is the one buying the furniture she should put it together they're she, not reading between the lines no they're not i personally love putting furniture together okay well good for you okay good for you get put your own furniture together <laughs> your wife needs to play the sims it's a lot cheaper than constantly redecorating the house 
it seems like a weird hobby. It does. Is this normal, guys? Is this a normal hobby? God, a lot of people are not the asshole. I think everyone sucks here. I don't like, think. I think so too. I override all these. I think not the everyone assholes. sucks because there is lack of communication in this. Yeah. Because clearly you did not commit. I mean, again, maybe you did communicate, but then in that in that case, then he probably would have said. Yeah. But like clearly, you did not communicate with her that you hate building this furniture. And it's like a pain in the ass for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe if you communicated to that, then she would be like, okay, well, either, you know, like she would have done something else about it. Exactly. But it's like all of a sudden you're just like, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. Me. It's kind of. And also like, I don't know. Fuck. Your wife asked you to do something like. I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't do anything else. Exactly. Well, this is the, this is where context is needed, right? Because <laughs> yeah. it's like, okay, well, what else are you, are you helping out around the house? Uh -huh. Are you, you know, like if because you know maybe you're not doing anything fucking around the house. Yeah. And then she's just like, well, at least just fucking do this. Uh, like, put exactly. this together, you piece of shit. <laughs> exactly. Maybe that's what it is. It could be. I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Uh. <laughs> Oof. Next, <laughs> am I the asshole for going behind my wife's back and telling her to stop being the cool mom in quotations going cool behind mom. her back and saying that? OK, yeah, that's very strange. It is. Yeah. So it says, well, I think it might be two separate things. Am I the asshole for going behind my wife's back and telling her to stop being the cool mom? Mm. My wife, 38 female and I, 40 male, have been married for two years. She has two kids from a previous relationship, Jen. Uh, 16 female and Tom 12 male. My wife has primary custody of the kids. So they live with us for the most part. Their dad is still present in their lives and is petitioning the court to change their custody agreement to give him more time with them. He's a decent guy and we get along just fine, but my wife ho still holds some animosity toward him. I like to think that the three of us co-parent together well, but I also understand my role is more secondary than theirs. It is homecoming week at Jen's school. So Jen's a 16 year old girl. She is in her junior year. And a few weeks ago, she was asked to attend the homecoming dance by a senior boy. She was very excited. And my wife took her dress shopping, setting her setting up a hair and nails appointment and the whole deal. I think my wife was almost more excited about it than Jen was. <laughs> Last Friday, I caught Jen trying to steal alcohol and weed from my locked liquor cabinet. Weed is legal here, but I still keep all my alcohol and weed in a locked cabinet. My wife was running errands with her son before taking the kids to their dads for the weekend. I caught Jen red-handed, literally with a bottle of rum in one hand and a handful of pre-rolled joints in the other. <laughs> Go, Jen! <laughs> Sounds like a good weekend. <laughs> uh, I waited until my wife came home and I told her what happened. She was mad, but also running late. So I to sh so she told Jen they talk about it on the way to her dad's. God, this is so long. When she got back, I asked her how the drive went with Jen. She said it went about as expected. Jen apologized and said it wouldn't happen again. I asked what she decided on for punishment. And she said nothing since Jen didn't actually take anything. So basically no harm, no foul. Sounds like a gentle parent, if you ask me. Oh, a gentle parenting at its best. <laughs> I asked her if she told her about... Wait, I asked her if she told her ex about it, and she said no. I told her she is extremely generous with Jen in this situation, and I feel like she's being too lenient. I told her at the very least, her ex deserves to know so he can keep an eye on anything he might have at his place. But she didn't think he needed to know. Mm -hmm. I ended up texting Jen's dad to let him know what happened. Ooh. He must have talked with Jen because there was a pretty loud phone call going on about an hour later. My, wi my wife stormed into the room I was in and demanded to know why I went behind her back. She oh. told me I have no business getting involved the way I did and I should have let her handle it. I told her she wasn't handling anything by pretending it didn't happen and that her ex deserved to know. Apparently, he thinks Jen's punishment should be missing out on the homecoming dance. Which caused, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> which caused a major meltdown from Jen, which led to the phone call. My wife thinks I crossed a major line and I should leave all parenting to her. She said Jen's actions are normal teenage rebellion. I told her that the cool mom thing isn't doing anyone any favors. Jen's dad is really pushing to keep Jen home from the dance. But my wife is still thinking of letting her go. Am I the asshole? God damn. I always, I always think these ones are really funny. Because I feel like this is, this is, and I feel like we've heard these before with Am I the Asshole where we'll have like a, a step parent, right? Mm. Or like, you know, a, a couple that got together sure. and they have kids from previous relationship. Um, conveniently, mm. 
they'll decide when's a good time for you to be a parent and when's a good time for you to not. <laughs> and I feel like this happens all the time. They'll you mean be like, the step-parents? Yes. So the mom's saying, hey, leave this to me. This is sure. none of your business. Don't be doing this, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But then on the flip side, later, something might happen where the kids need a ride or something else. And it's like, yeah. you need to do this. You're, you're, you're their the parent. parent. And it's like, well, you didn't want me to be the parent last week. Right. And now you want me to be the parent. Like, you can't pick and choose, right? Right. And I do feel like once you are with somebody, like, married and they're, like, basically the other parent figure, figure in your kid's life that they do have some say in, yes. in how the kids are being raised because they're part of the family you know what I mean it's true I know it's complicated and it's yes. a little bit like uh like you know their their dad is somewhere sure. someone else but also it's like you're sharing a house together yes. you know you're married now to this person so so what do we think is he an asshole I don't think he necessarily is okay like I think he's he's just warning the dad like hey just to let you know this is what happened. Your mm. daughter, your daughter did try to like take some alcohol and weed. So if you have anything lying around the house, just be careful. Oh, it's a tough one. I don't know. I can't decide. Would you not do that? I do. Like, it depends on the relationship. Mm -hmm. I agree that like once you're married and you have like a step parent situation, you are technically their step parent. Yeah. But I think it depends on the dynamic, right? It, like I think this, these are discussions that need to be had. Like how much of a parenting role are you taking mm. you know what i mean like have you decided that you are going to be because i think it's like because they've only been married a couple years yeah. you know so it's like i don't feel like he feels like he's like a full-on parent just yet yeah so i don't know if it's i don't know if it's crossing i don't know i actually am very undecided in this God one so he's you're saying he's not the asshole um i don't think he's the asshole necessarily yeah maybe i don't know I actually, I'm stumped. Well, why don't you see what, see, what, see what the people be saying, hmm. Roses? I'm trying to think in my... Like, okay, let's think, Daniel. You have kids. <laughs> let's let's assume you have I kids. That. I I like, no, you that have, sounded like you actually I, have kids. I know. I was like, let's the listeners assume, are going to think that yeah. I actually have kids. The way you said it, you're like, you have kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, let's, I do not, Let's guys. assume you have kids from a previous... <laughs> let's assume that you're in this situation. Yeah, so I've previously... And your kid... Um, and these your are... Your kid went... Like behind your back, try to steal your new husband's fucking alcohol. Alcohol, and then your new husband told you. I think a part. Like, I would be pissed at my kid for doing that. Sure. I would be. I think I would have reacted more than the mom did, where she was like, "Oh, Let it's me talk fine." To she said she's not going to do it again. No, no harm, no foul. She didn't actually steal anything. Right. That part is messed up. It's like, uh, no, she actually like. She was going to steal. Exactly. Yeah. If he hadn't have caught her, she yeah, would have yeah, taken yeah. it. Like, yeah, totally. He just caught her red-handed. So I think that. You but know. then at th that part, fine. Yeah. I think that part's fine. But then like, do you think that as a parent, if you were the parent, you would think, okay, I'm handling it like the way that I expect to handle it and the mm -hmm. way that I would want to handle it uh, versus so then if your partner went and like told your ex-partner about the thing without t consulting you first, do you think that's a little bit crossing the line? I don't know. You don't think so? Maybe a little bit. Like, maybe you should have spoken to the wife and said, like... Yes. Hey, I think we... Well, he did kind of say to her, like, we should let your husband know, right? Your ex, I, I mean... Let's see. Let's see. Let me read this part again. Because then he say, like, hey, we can... Uh, we should let your ex know. And then she was like, no, or something. She said, no, he said this. I asked her if she told her ex about it. And oh, she said, no, I told her she is being extremely generous with Jen in this situation. Mm. And I feel like she's being too lenient. I told her at the very least, her ex deserves to know so he can keep an eye on anything, blah, blah, blah. She didn't think that he needed to know. Mm. So I don't think that she said, he said that we should tell your ex. Right, right, right. She just, but she did say that he, she thinks he doesn't need to know. I think everyone sucks. That's my, that's my verdict. Okay. Everyone sucks here. Okay, let's look at the thing. <laughs> uh, first response. You're the asshole. Soft. As in soft, you're the asshole. Mm -hmm. Jen did something bad and she's at that age where if she starts to believe she can get away with things, it could lead to more potentially dangerous and criminal behavior. It should be addressed firmly by both parents. Um, it's not right that the mother kept it to herself. However, you are not Jen's parent. Your wife is. So this is where it's like murky. So it depends on how you look at it. Yeah. Do you see yourself? Have you had that discussion with your wife? Yeah. That you are also taking a parent parental role. Mm. Right. Because just because you start, let's say you, d you start dating someone and let's say you, they have kids and let's say a year later you get married. Do you really think that you're like fully the parent role? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is where it gets a bit murky. Yeah. Um, 
So I'll put it this way. Jen already spoke to her mother and her mother told her everything that will be fine. Everything will be fine. And as long as she doesn't do it again, it will be finished. No need for her to father to find out. Her mother has assured her of this. Then suddenly her father starts scolding her. Jen then thinks that her mother lied to her. Oh, I see. So this person's like going through the scenario mm. here. Um, so anyway, this person's saying softer, the asshole. Let's see the other comments. There aren't really many comments. God damn, roses. Let's see. Why is it so hard to read comments? I know I hate the way they do this on this Reddit thing. It's, it's like so the stupid. way they group the comments. I'm just like, oh, this is so fucking yeah. annoying. Mm, I want to see some top comments. So some people are saying, not the asshole, agreeing with you, mm -hmm. saying here. Um, well, I'm kind of on the fence with everyone sucks here. But right. I'm kind of not, you're not the asshole as well. Right. So it says, your wife still plans on doing nothing, though. That's the issue. But, but hold on. Um... Not the asshole. The only reason Jen didn't take anything is because you caught her, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You may have overstepped about telling her ex, but perhaps a justified move. Um, not the asshole. Hell no. D didn't actually take anything. You caught her red handed, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. uh, not the asshole. Well, actually, a lot of people. Oh, someone wrote everyone sucks here. I agree that Jen should get some punishment. Um, and I agree that her ex should know. So he can keep an eye on her stuff. Ex-husband yeah. is being way over the top. Your wife is being too lenient. Yeah. So I think, yeah, maybe it's like, a mix. Yeah. We need we need a middle ground. <laughs> we do. Someone wrote, shocked at all the not the assholes here, which reeks to me of bizarre Puritan culture Americans seem to have around alcohol and substances. Don't touch the stuff until you're 21, then binge to your heart's content. <laughs> okay. The mature adult <laughs> thing to do would have been to sit, sit down and discuss with your stepdaughter and wife um, that stealing things is not okay. Excessive substance abuse is not okay. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to ask me about drinking? I do kind of agree with this. I do think like, yes, the stealing aspect. Yeah. Wrong. But like a 16 year old wanting to have a little booze and a little fucking weed. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. You sit down with them. Mm -hmm. You tell them that stealing is wrong. Then you do a couple shots and smoke a joint. together. <laughs> exactly. <okay? laughs> That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I don't think it's like. Should have just told me you wanted to get high. I mean. <laughs> yeah. I would rather you do it at my house yeah. than do it. I mean, I do believe this. I do. I think like I want to give if I have kids, I want to give my kid the first drink. Mm. Because then they got to learn that it's not... You got to demystify it, okay? Yeah. Because, like, I think the reason why so many people abuse alcohol, at least, like, when you're young, especially, is because it's like, oh, my God, like, never done this before. Mm. Like, let's get fucking drunk or let's whatever. Get let's get wasted. Let's get wasted. Oh, my God. I can't even, ima even imagine. Like, I think back to, like, my childhood and, oh. like, this shit that I put my parents through. Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking, like, if I had kids, like, how, like dealing with them coming back drunk some nights mm -hmm. and all this shit oh god exactly though and honestly then, for a 16 year old things could be worse it could they could be mm -hmm. yeah that's definitely like how many kids have stolen alcohol from their parents like liquor cabinet yeah. probably almost every child a lot <laughs> exactly am i the asshole for refusing to cook a vegetarian thanksgiving Ooh. dinner I feel, You're the asshole. <laughs> I, I feel like I've slipped into the twilight zone and this whole argument with this whole argument. So tell me what's up, internet folks. Mm. Background. I, 31 female, and my brother, 30, 35 male, do not get along. Mm. When he was a teen, he saw a documentary on factory farming and decided to become a vegetarian. He got very, very... He's not vegan, though? Mm. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> He got very, very annoying about it quickly, but my dad shut him down when he s started trying to get the rest of us to be vegetarian with him. Then he went to college, made a bunch of very strange friends, and went militantly vegan. Oh, he is vegan. <laughs> okay. Now he is. Uh, it's his entire personality. I, I stopped talking to him after he threw a fit about one of my birthday dinners being at a steakhouse and spammed me my, message my messages and SM with pictures of abused cows. Okay. It's like, it's like a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My parents are trying to repair the situation. And for a while, it did seem like Mark was getting better. So I've been trying to let him back into contact gradually. Then he started dating Pam, who is some kind of vegan influencer. <laughs> <laughs> Pam? Mm, Never she, heard of Pam. Me neither. I bet you they're not. They're using aliases. Right. Probably. Uh, she is apparently moderately popular online. But I have no idea what she does exactly. I don't know if Mark was trying to impress her or what. But last Thanksgiving, he insisted that my mom cook a vet, cook at least a vegetarian meal or they wouldn't come on ethical grounds. My mom just wanted everyone to get along and on her favorite holiday. So she agreed. It was not a fun meal. This They wanted the whole meal to be vegetarian. Is that what they that's said? That's what it sounds okay. like. Yeah. Or it says, oh, yeah. Cook right, at least, like at least vegan, a vegetarian. At least make it vegetarian. Yeah. Sure. This year, my parents have downsized for retirement and my mom is having health problems. 
I bought their house when they moved, so my mom asked me to host Thanksgiving so it could be like usual. I told everyone in the group chat so Mark and Pam could make travel arrangements, and Pam immediately started gushing about all the vegan replacements, or no, sorry, the vegan replacement recipes she could give me to replace the traditional ones. I said to send me a main dish recipe they like, and I would give it a shot, but I'm making the traditional meal otherwise, and there would be plenty of things that they can eat. Mark and Pam have been arguing about this with me for days, and then Mark said that if I wouldn't make a meat-free meal, they wouldn't come. This upset my mom, who asked me to just make what she made last year to keep the peace, but I told her that Mark needs to get over himself, and I'm not coddling him. I'm having turkey on Thanksgiving. My dad privately agrees with me, but Mark threatening to not come is upsetting my mom so much that he's worried it will impact her health. There's an th- there's a, a not big, but also not zero chance that this might be some of the family, the last family holidays that we have with her. Oh God. My mom thinks I'm putting Turkey over my whole, my own family. And I'm not sure. I'm not so sure anymore. Am I the asshole? And then there's a huge edit. Should I read oh, it? Oh God. Sure. Edit. Whoa, this blew up. <laughs> So the answers to some common questions, as I said, I've already offered to make, uh, to make sure there's a main dish and sides that they can eat. Mark and Pam will not show up if anyone else eats meat at this meal. If any meat is served to anyone, they will, they won't come doing multiple meals that day or across multiple days is a no go. I'm a newly minted critical care physician at an understaffed hospital during a major holiday week. And I have a limited time window between of time between shifts. I have time for one gathering and I would rather not waste it on a miserable one like last year. Oh my God. Mark and Pam can't host because they live in a van at the present. (laughs) Of course they do. (laughs) I'm also not willing to, Sorry. (laughs) I'm also not willing to have them in my kitchen for hours, bitching about the meat in my fridge, the cooking, the cookware and utensils and whatever else they can find to complain about the time it would take for them to to come eat and socialize um, for a couple of hours and leave is the maximum amount I'm willing to let them be in my home. Although it would admittedly be interesting to watch them try to host a family Thanksgiving out of a van. (laughs) It is very unlikely that my mom is going to die anytime soon. It's just a non-zero chance. She's understandably worried about it. And it's uh, in the pessimism stage of grieving her health. She has a good prognosis. And most people with her condition pull through and live for a long time afterwards. If it is by some chance the last Thanksgiving, I don't want a repeat of last year's Thanksgiving uh, would do her any good as everyone left the ta- that table unsatisfied and unhappy. <laughs> I mean, obviously I'm vegan. We're vegan. So we're slightly biased. I mean, yes. I think there, I think everyone sucks. Yeah. Like this, this person sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the, the brother sucks. I think the brother's girlfriend sucks. Yeah. They're too much. Like I understand to some degree. Okay. Yeah. Obviously like I'm vegan. Uh, Daniel's vegan. We're both vegan. We prefer the meal to be vegan. Yes. And I also understand like as an ethical vegan, I get it. Like I don't like, it's not enjoyable to, mm-hmm. you know, have people eat meat around you and like fucking have turkey, uh, you know, on the table. Like it's not an enjoyable experience, Yeah. but at the same time, it's like we live so I, I get people that want to avoid that kind of scenario. For sure. But I think if you want to do that, you got to just like either host your own. Yeah. And unfortunately, they live in a van, so yeah. they can't. But like either host your own and cook the meal yourself mm-hmm. or just don't show up. But like I wouldn't not be the, this person to be like, you have to make the whole thing vegetarian or vegan. Otherwise, I'm not going to come. Yeah. Like that's just very that makes vegans look so fucking bad. I agree. And it's just so extreme. I think about the way that my family does like Mm -hmm. these dinners now. Like they always make sure that there's stuff for me Mm -hmm. to eat. So there's always like, they have like really good um, alternatives for like vegan roasts now and stuff. There's a really good one that my parents get every year. Yeah. And like for what, for a couple years, for the last couple years in a row, they didn't cook any like meat. But then the last one, I seem to remember they did like a a small chicken or something Mm -hmm. because like they wanted to still eat meat. But then I had my stuff that I had. Yeah. And then we'd like share the vegetables and all that kind of stuff. So like, you know, you kind of like make it work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I, I, I'm not going to like have that. Like, you're right. I'm not, I don't want to sit at a table where everyone's just like slicing ham and like passing it around yeah. and all this shit. But at the same time, I also want to spend time with my family. Yeah. So, so like, it's a bit, it's, it's very extreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, this person that wrote this, everyone's going to say not the asshole. I can probably, I can just, 
I can sense it because yeah. people hate vegans. Yeah. And obviously <laughs> these vegans sound annoying. This is like sounds like stereotypical vegans mm. that people hate. Uh, just FYI, if you're not vegan, most vegans are not like this. Yeah. I've never met any vegans like this that refuse to sit at a table because there's meat on it or refuse to go to gatherings. Like most of the time we're dealing with, we're the ones that have to like suffer yeah. usually. Um, but I, I, like the sister, it's like, it's one fucking meal. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, it was so bad. Like, oh, vegetarian food. Like she's one of these people. I feel yeah. like, oh my God, it was so bad. Like didn't enjoy it at all. Well, mm -hmm. maybe your mom didn't do a very good job cooking the fucking vegetarian meal Yeah, because vegan vegetarian Thanksgiving can be fucking delicious. Like so good. So fuck off. Yeah. Like maybe learn to cook better. Yeah. It can be a lot of work, but it's also mm -hmm. so good. I remember that one year we did one. Oh, it's so good. It was so good. And this was, I think this was like early days though, where, where like, I don't know, we were, both of us were like, well, and you're like a way better cook now. <laughs> But I remember us being in your fr like our friend's kitchen. Yeah, for like we were making hours. like lentil roast, and well, to be fair, it was Thanksgiving, so it takes yeah, time. That's true. We made like lentil roast, which is so good, like nut and lentil roast, which is yeah. like my favorite thing to make during Thanksgiving. Oh my god, it's so good! It's so good. Like I would argue, it's better than fucking turkey. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, like I've oh. eaten turkey before. It's just fucking, you know. It's it's like dry I don't know, it's meat. Just, ooh, it's like so lentil tasty. roast is so much more flavorful, and mm. it's so good. Um make that you can make like a sweet potato fucking casserole or whatever yeah you can make like green beans um, most of the sides are going to be vegetarian vegan anyway well and you or have that you have that easy. recipe video which you made the like seitan roast yeah you could do and that, that too. was fucking delicious so i just feel like they're and also it's like your mom's sick your mom's really upset it's mm. almost like neither of them are re willing to budge yeah. so i feel like everyone sucks yeah i think it's like you know what oh sorry guys if you want a turkey, like maybe you just have a turkey another day. <laughs> like just have a vegetarian meal with your family yeah. and then fucking to the next day or the next time you have some time off work. Yeah. Fucking get a turkey and fucking cook it up. I think we have a probably unpopular opinion. Of I course. mean, maybe not amongst the listeners here, but yeah. um, I don't know. Uh, but I do think like the the brother is probably being more unreasonable. Yeah. Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think the brother is being more unreasonable. To be fair, the sister did say, she's like, I can make you guys exactly. like a main dish. I'll make sure there's lots that you guys exactly. can eat. But Which I think as a be... guest, you should be like, okay, thanks. Yeah. Or just say, hey, sorry. Listen, I'm just really not comfortable with having like being around meat. That's yeah. just an ethical thing. So I'm just going to not go to Thanksgiving. Exactly. I think that's the better way to handle it than being like refusing to come and just being very rude about it exactly so, so dumb oh let's God. read some comments daniel everyone sucks here let they're me, gonna let, say let me, let they're me gonna see. say you're the asshole oh no you're not the asshole that's what they're gonna say daniel i think not the asshole i knew it mm. you're not putting turkey over family mark is putting tofurkey over family oh my god <laughs> You've really reasonably be accommodated enough with a vegan option. Mark doesn't get to hold holidays hostage because of his own dietary choices. That's ridiculous. Uh, if Mark wants to pitch a fit, that's him. Okay. Hey, <laughs> let's see some more comments. My aunt was vegan. She brought her own meals to family gatherings. Why can't they do the same? Not the asshole. Not the asshole. A lot of people are saying not the yeah, asshole. Yeah, I knew it. People don't understand, though, from the vegan perspective. It's mm. like, again, I, I totally agree that the brother is the asshole as well. But I don't think people get that it's like, it's not just a dietary choice, okay? It's like, it's an ethical decision. So yeah. people don't feel comfortable with the meat around them. So mm. I can kind of understand that as aspect. But I do think, like, if you're a human being in this world that has family relationships, that has friendships and relationships, you have to, like, you have to be able to survive because you can't avoid it like mm. i'm sorry you just can't or just go and live in a forest and like isolate yourself that's the only other option mm. everyone's saying not the asshole right well some people this one's an interesting one okay what a mess <laughs> not the asshole on the grounds that mark was an asshole for spamming you about the steakhouse but as for thanksgiving i'm going to be crazy and say your parents are the ones who need to make a change here they need to change their concept of having everyone get together for Thanksgiving because it's really not fair on any of their kids. If Mark and his girlfriend are militantly vegan, mm -hmm. if this is a true moral belief of theirs, then it's unfair to expect them to eat um, and exchange pleasantries over the carcass of a dead bird. Oh, oh that, this is definitely a vegan or vegetarian that's yeah. writing this. Similarly, you're not a vegan and should not be required to give up your traditional Thanksgiving feast, especially when you're hosting. True. Your parents need to figure out ways to have all their kids together that doesn't involve food. My suggestion is that they go to Mark and girlfriends for a vegan tea day brunch 
uh, Thanksgiving Day brunch, they they come to your house for the Thanksgiving Day dinner, and the whole family meets together in the middle for a non-food event, perhaps a no-kill turkey trot. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And someone literally why everyone hates militant vegans. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> God damn, Roses. Are we done? We're done. We're done. All right, yeah. you guys. And on that pause, that was actually very timely because we are getting to Canadian Thanksgiving, guys. We are going so getting to Canadian Thanksgiving. It's happening, it's guys. It's like literally this weekend. Well, no, it's actually ne- not this weekend. It's the one Oh, after. it's the next weekend. Yeah. Oh, that's true. It's next weekend. Yeah, it's on the, I think it's the 14th, I believe. Um, Is yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. usually it falls on uh, the 12th. The it usually falls on my birthday weekend, so that's mm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Anyways, there we go, guys. Uh, what do we think? Are we militant vegans? Probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> God damn. Um. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a little mix of a story and M I Z asshole. Yeah. So let us know if you uh, are watching on YouTube. Leave a little comment in the comment section letting us know your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And make sure you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel Mm -hmm. and uh, join our Patreon, patreon.com slash the savage podcast for bonus episodes, free content, early episodes, and a shout out. And what else, Daniels? And also, if you're watching this video on YouTube, give this video a thumbs up, hit subscribe. And if you're watching on the or listening on your favorite favorite podcast platform, make sure you hit follow. You get updated as soon as new new episodes go live. Yeah. And we will talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye.